Welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers. I'm your host, Commander Corbo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's your co-host, Lieutenant William. Welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers, everybody. So today we're talking about this Star Trek Discovery episode, If Memory Serves. This was an interesting episode dealing with memory, but also dealing with the plurality of self. Now, this was an exciting episode because we finally really got to meet this new Mr. Spock. He was actually talking and thinking and walking and feeling, I believe, in this episode. That was kind of at the heart of this episode, emotions versus logic and the plurality of Spock's self. We got into to just why he is such a, you know, such a divided personality in this episode. We got to see some of the origin of that. Of course, that's for this version of Spock. You know, it's the Discovery version. And I think a lot of us are accepting that it's not really the same version. We're not really trying to say that this is a, long, uh, a young Leonard Nimoy. Uh, Ethan Peck is not really doing a Nimoy impersonation as much as Zachary Quinto was. But, you know, he's really making this his own character just like uh, you know Mud did and Pike in Star Trek Discovery. So we get to examine you know the dual sides of personality with another character in this episode, Dr. Kolber. He's come back from the dead and he doesn't feel like himself. Maybe he's lost some of his memories. He doesn't seem to feel at home in his home. And you know so that sort of seems like it is a memory issue to some degree but it's more than that. And there's actually a theory online that he's been combined with the Dark Mirror Universe version of himself. So he is actually two people combined when he was in the Mycelial Network. When they put him back together again, they accidentally or on purpose put him together with this other version of himself, this sort of evil version of himself. And he, of course, takes his inner drama out and, uh, you know, it takes it into a big, um, well, a big brawl with Ash Tyler. And Ash Tyler is another character who has this dual personality thing going. Now, it's interesting because for him, we actually have even more uh, dual personality stuff layered on top of his dual personality. In this episode, we get the suggestion that he might actually have been brainwashed sort of a second time by Section 31. He might actually sort of be a Manchurian candidate doing things covertly that even he doesn't know about. So he's accused of spying on the Discovery crew, and he says, no, I'm not doing it, but they say, well, maybe you don't even know that you're doing it because they have this new brain technology that, you know, Burnham finds out about because she delivers Spock to Section 31, only to have Giorgio say, you gotta rescue him out of here because that brain scrambling technology messes you up for good and you know they're gonna use it on him to get whatever the secret is that he has about the Red Angel we're gonna to get to the Red Angel in a second too but you know it's interesting that Giorgio says you know by the way this is gonna be good for me Burnham when you get Spock out of here because it'll get me points with my superiors and it will help me in my competition with this other guy so it's interesting to think maybe Giorgio was lying about this brain technology being really bad for you. I mean, it's Section 31, so we know that they're not really good guys. But it's interesting to think maybe she made that all up just to score points against this guy she's now competing with. And uh, another interesting thing that she said in this episode, she actually said that when she was in her own universe and she met the Telosians and they used some mind delusion on her, she just blew them off the face of their planet. And it's interesting because how did she have the power to do that? And isn't it more likely that the Telosians just used another mind illusion to make her think that she had done that so she would go away and leave them alone? Anyways, so we have Ash Tyler now possibly having his dual personalities conflated with this Manchurian candidate sort of uh, alter ego that, you know, would be running around doing things in, you know, sort of a secret mode that this other Tyler doesn't even know about. Anyways, uh, it's getting a little bit confusing to even think about that. But then we also have the Red Angel, and who knows who the Red Angel is? The Red Angel is sort of a superhero with some sort of an alter ego. And there's another theory going around online that it's Arium, actually. And I'd say that makes a lot of sense. We saw Arium get sort of zapped by this 
futuristic probe uh, that came back with reprogramming and, you know, sent some sort of a zap through the computer that went into her, and we didn't really find out what that was about yet. She seemed to be cropping up in the background, getting a lot of extra little shots, a little extra screen time in this episode, possibly hinting that she is the Red Angel. I don't know. Anyways, guys, I'd love to hear what you think about all of these theories. What do you think about Star Trek Discovery in general? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you like this new Spock? Can't stand him? Let me know in the comments below, and please subscribe if you haven't already. And please do share this video with your friends and enemies. Live long and prosper.